the Arctic. Mysterious, desolate, and fragile. The Arctic ice is melting, and this vulnerable ecosystem is under threat. The impact of global warming may well be catastrophic. The Arctic is really the litmus test of global climate change. The ice in the Arctic Ocean, both in uh, thickness and in volume, and slowly receding from the edges. What we're going to find out here is really just an uh, accelerated picture of what's going to happen in the south. I want to cross the Arctic Ocean to bring attention to global warming. We're going to cross from Siberia to the North Pole to Canada. First ever summer crossing of the Arctic Ocean. The wild shoreline of Lake Superior in Minnesota is home to Lonnie Dupre. A veteran of six major Arctic expeditions, he's planning the One World Expedition for 2005. Lonnie was the first man to circumnavigate Greenland, the world's largest island. On this 5,000 kilometer journey, he was so shocked by the scale of the ice melt he decided to undertake an expedition to draw attention to global warming. When not exploring, Lonnie manages to combine his love of the wild with building traditional wilderness homes. This is my uh, day job and this is what I'm doing when I'm not running around the Arctic. And uh, it keeps me out of trouble until I can come up with another idea, <gasps> another project, a good, worthy project. Lonnie is so concerned about conservation that he only uses reclaimed timber to build his log cabins. Well, I'm very passionate uh, about global warming because it, it is affecting everything here. The straight line winds are knocking down the boreal forest. Uh, we're getting more uh, milder winters, uh, less precipitation in the winter. And also, um, a lot of the lakes are, are getting very, very low here. These log buildings are easy to heat, cost less to build and um, just all around environmentally friendly. This first summer crossing of the Arctic Ocean is extremely dangerous. Lonnie's strategy will rely heavily on his recent Greenland Arctic experience. He will use skis and kayaks to navigate the hazardous Arctic pack ice and freezing waters. The epic journey will cover 2,000 kilometers across the top of the world. A meticulous training schedule has already begun. A little too long, I'd say. Eric Larson, a friend and fellow explorer from Minnesota, will join Lonnie on this expedition. Eric's strengths are is he's quite an athlete, but what it's going to really take is a lot of mental preparedness. And that's something you get, uh, I think, more with age. He's like 10 years younger than I. It's going to be a little harder on him. He's going to be missing home quite a bit. Uh, uh, there's going to be a lot of things eating on him. To go on a major expedition is something that I've been trying to achieve, that I've been working towards most of my life. It didn't take me very long to decide to say yes that I would go. Well yeah. maybe put a lanyard on there That's or something. I was going to say we could maybe do something. For an estimated hundred days, Lonnie and Eric will face the adverse Arctic conditions alone. Hey hold up Lon, I gotta get my spray skirt on, okay? Yeah, me too. Training is not just about testing a variety of equipment, it's also about testing themselves they will need to recognize and respect each other's strengths and weaknesses. Even these must have a flatter bottom 
for a longer point than the, than the Calabria. Mentally, Lonnie is very tough. Uh, circumnavigating Greenland, I think, is one of the hardest expeditions that's been done in history. For myself to go out alone and do something like this, I would be a fool just because I don't have the experience. And so his um, Arctic experience is gonna be very important to our success. One of the things that we need to be ready to do is pull a 300 pound kayak across the ice in all sorts of conditions and so we need to be able to understand how our bodies react pulling day after day after day. And so training is something that both Lonnie and myself take very seriously. And what we try to do is mimic the exact conditions or similar conditions, I should say, that we're gonna find on the Arctic Ocean. We've been uh, training with tires pulling along the coast of uh, Lake Superior and uh, people drive by or walk by, you think we're a little twisted. <laughs> Lonnie and Eric have decided to put themselves and their equipment to the test in real ice conditions in the Canadian high Arctic island, Coral Harbour. The actual expedition will start in Russia from Cape Artyshki, Siberia, crossing to the geographic North Pole, then on to the finish at Ellesmere Island, Canada. The volatile tides, winds, and unpredictable movement of the ice flows have previously prevented even the most experienced explorers from successfully crossing the Arctic Ocean in the summer. We're going to Coral Harbor for a real good reason. They have uh, very rugged ice flows for us to train in. There's also open water, uh, so we can actually get the kayaks in and test various things like paddles and dry suits and, and life vests and things like that. Uh, but also uh, visit with the, with the Inuit people there in the community and ask them how global warming has affected their life. Flying north, they can't escape the climate change below them. The soil of the tundra, normally frozen with permafrost, is clearly thawing. The only way for Lonnie and Eric to decide which pieces of equipment are most suitable for their 14-week expedition is by intensive Arctic training. We need to test the length of the boat, how they're going to paddle, if we can get all our equipment in there, because the first stage of our expedition across the Arctic Ocean is uh, about 70 kilometers open water. We need to be extremely safe. It's a very dangerous undertaking. <laughs> 